I hear that uh, that guy that was in non-compliance uh, is tearing down the roof and trying to go back to his originally approved plan on uh, Fort whatever it is road there. Yeah, he's going back to the original approval. Yeah. 14 Fort Rachel. Yeah, Fort Rachel. I don't, why didn't he just come back with an alternative? I think he tried a couple times and he just didn't feel like he was getting anywhere. So he said. He did, but the, it was that Eric from the design build company who just kept telling the same story, but he never showed us anything. I think we the, showed that one that was like, okay, and we made some suggestions, then he was gone. Well, in the last meeting, I had suggested he consider <clears throat> maybe leaving the height where it was and increasing the pitch. Of course, that yeah. still would require a fair amount of work to fix that, so. Yeah. Sarah, I was gonna try to bail if you, the three of you don't mind. So I need to recuse myself for one of them. Um, <clears throat> it's the second one, which if he's there, we can call him first. Oh, I, I need to vote. How many, how many, there aren't too many public hearings, are there? There are five. Oh, there are? Oh. Yes. <clears throat> Can you um, open well, it, close it, open it, close it? Or is that? I don't have a problem doing that. Um, the one I want to recuse myself on is 2 Elm Street. Are they here? Can we see who's here? Yeah, let me I'm bring them into. Sorry, I just had something come up at the total oh, last. Okay. If we can do that, I have no problem staying on for that. Does anyone object to opening and closing? So no. Okay. No. Don? No, no, no. Okay. Thank you. No problem. Okay. Everybody should be here. Okay. That was in attendees. Can you hear me? Yep. You guys got me? Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. Sarah, though, you, Sarah, you got to open the uh, the meeting up, though. No, actually, um, Peter no. reads his little spiel first. Oh, okay. All right, let me start the meeting. Then we start recording. <laughs> Oh, here we go. Here live stream. Sign up, sign up. There's a familiar face. Okay. Should be set. All right, let's get back in here. <clears throat> okay, are we starting now, Sarah? Yeah, just reading that little. Yep. Okay, thanks. Okay. All right, this meeting of the Historic District Commission will take place in a webinar format through Zoom. The chair of the commission is Sarah Moriarty. The host of the webinar is the building official. Staff attending this meeting include Peter Zavinglis and Linda Galetta. Anyone speaking should state their names prior to speaking each time. Panelists in this webinar meeting will be the commission members and building staff. Panelists who would like to comment on an item should indicate such by using the icon to raise hand at the bottom of the screen. After a panelist raises their hand, they'll be able to comment one at a time when called upon by the chairperson. Panelists should mute their microphones until called upon. Panelists calling into the meeting by telephone may raise or lower their hand by pressing star nine to mute or unmute, unmute your call, press star six. To make a motion or second a motion, commission members can raise a hand and be acknowledged by the host or chair. To vote on a motion, commission members will be called upon individually by the chair to vote. Public can participate in the meeting during the public communications agenda item. The public will be asked to raise their hand during public communications if they want to speak at this time by using the icon to raise hand at the bottom of the screen. 
and the public will be called upon by the host one at a time and will be able to speak during this time. Attendees must identify themselves before speaking. That's all yours. All right, thank you. So I'm going to open the meeting on October 6th at 7.04. And Todd, if you could read the call. Sure. Uh, dear Michelle, please publish the following public notice or one insertion on Monday, September 28th, 2020, Town of Groton Notice of Public Hearing Historic District Commission. The Historic District Commission will hold a public hearing on Tuesday, October 6, 2020 at 7 p.m. virtually via the Zoom platform to hear the following applications requesting a certificate of appropriateness. HDC 20-62, 21 Gravel Street, Brian and June Carroll, owners, Mark Camo, applicant, alterations and remodeling, pin number 26191841283. HDC 20-63, 2 Elm Street, Lori Reed and Catherine Reef, owners, creative enclosures, applicant, new three season room, pin number 26191820 HDC 20-64, 23 and a half Pearl Street, William and Melissa Jankowski, owners, applicant, solar roof, pin number 26191831945. HDC 20-65, 54 West Main Street, BAB 26 Realty LLC owner, Greg Fettis applicant, rear accessible ramp and access door, pin number 26191830 HDC 20-66, 28 Water Street, Robert H. Nelson, owner applicant, addition, pin number 26180639 A Zoom meeting link will be posted to the town's website, meetings, calendar, or can be attended by visiting www.zoom.us. Webinar ID 842-6027-9027, password 040205, or by phone 1312-626-6799. Applications are on file and available for public inspection during normal business hours at the Planning Department. 134 Groton Long Point Road, Groton, Connecticut, dated this 28th day of September 2020 at Groton, Connecticut. Todd Brady, Secretary. Thank you, Todd. So for all of our attendants, um, and participants, we need to have a quorum of three to be able to vote on a meeting. And there are four of us, but Mr. Goodman needs to leave. And there's one application that I am gonna recuse myself on. So in an effort um, to move things along, what I'm gonna do is open the hearing. We're gonna hear that one hearing, close it, vote on it, and then Eric can go and then we can do the balance of our hearings. Okay. All right. So. <coughs> I am going to call uh, HDC 20-63 to Elm Street um, to begin their presentation, and I'm going to recuse myself on this one. Hi, I'm Kevin Jamili from Creative Enclosures. Uh, am I being heard okay? Yeah, maybe a little bit too much. <laughs> I've never done this, so bear with me. I mean, we can understand you, but you, you're you're it, a little loud. Too loud? Yeah, don't worry about it. You're okay. It's not true what Linda said about you. No, I'm just <laughs> the only person I recognize on this panel. So we are proposing and in agreement to remove a porch at 2 Elm Street and uh, replace it with single pane um, panels. And the aesthetics on the addition are to completely match the home and the homes in the neighborhood. Um, oh, be there? Yep. So with that being said, we're using single tab shingles. I don't know, can you see this? So Peter's running your application through on the screen. So can you see what P Peter's putting up? I do see it, yep. Okay, so if you just direct him where you want him to go in your application, then we can see what you want us to. Well, what I have is not in the set of plans. I went and found the shingles we were using that match the homes, um, which are Royal Sovereign single tab shingles. Um, I wanted you to see that I was using exact matching. And then I also brought the, not the exact one, but one that looks pretty close to this, which 
matches the neighborhood's lighting in the neighborhood, the porch lights, Walsh Gonsolini fixtures. Um, I, I didn't know, this is the first time I've been in front of a historical board, and it's my understanding that I am to match all the aesthetics uh, in the neighborhood, that we keep the home, um, that we keep the work as if it were there forever, and historically speaking. And so we've gone out of our way to see that we can do that. Um, I, I don't know exactly what information you need aside of that. Um, also, please, um, if I may, to the panel, our project manager who was supposed to be attending and worked on this is uh, no longer with us. So I am filling in and representing the project going forward. Oh, there I see. Is an exhibit, just if I can interject, there is an exhibit that does show the lighting fixture. And yes. Right. Uh, well, there's, a, there's an exhibit that's been posted online that shows the lighting fixture. I'm quite sure. It's it's near the was end. One of those, Linda, was that one of the individual ones that were separate? Yes. Yeah, I got, I got the, okay, great. Hang on one second, I'll find it. Yeah. Well, I, okay. I do have it also on the cover of the set of plans on the first page that they show <clears throat> this also light fixture. Well, I, I guess I guess my just first question is: Is everything that you're going to show or describe to us today has it been submitted, and it is is it in the exhibits that we're going to see? In other words, you technically you can't ha hold something up, Kevin, as an exhibit yeah. because it hasn't been posted and and included I, in the application. I really don't know what how far Jason went. Permit process, yeah, I'm going through his paper as now. So, um, Peter, are you at the very, very end? Because I uploaded some things at the end that are relating to 23 and a half Pearl Street. Yeah, I might have just, just, hang on just go, to the, go to the Groton website, go to the bottom of the. Of yeah, the I, got them, I got them on, but the stick and I'm going to stop share because it keeps coming down and scrolling in the way of my mouse in order to put it on uh, there. Okay. My, we're into a problem with that. Anyway, it's so. all the way down there. Let me get out of here. Oh, unbelievable. All right. Stop share. Got you. It looks like he's filed some sort of paperwork with you guys. Maybe it's an application. Is Was that the first one in the list? It says, I don't, Town of Groton Planning Development Services. And it says, to start this is not, hang on a second. I'm just trying to, is it this one right here? Is it this one? No, that's 23 and a half pearl. Because there's no address on it, so I'm clicking on them one at a time. Here is the photos of the house you need. Okay, like... so, so these at the top, those are supplemental yep. um, that I had to load at the end. So you want to go to, um, I'm pointing it and you can't see it, but you want to go to the book, the meeting files. Yeah, that's, that's what I got over here. This is the agenda packet right here. Okay. Oh, hang on a second. Oh, no. I was on the agenda back. That's where I was on the page for that. Hang on a second. So is it this material that I have here? I'm supposed to come by? Is this one right here? It was the first one that was up. Hang on a second. Two Elm Street, right here. Yeah, that's yeah. the one. 
Yeah, that's when I had up in the first place. Okay. <laughs> so, so if you scroll a little bit towards the end. Oh, I, I'm sorry. I misdirected you. I, I'm sorry. You're, you're right. My fault. My bad. Um, just keep going. Pictures, pictures, facts. Here we go. Here okay. We go. So there are the, the singles. Oh, yeah. Don't go calling everyone in your brother. Okay, hang on. The fact that I have a fever, right? Well, the, no, well, let's see what happens. All right. And there's a light right there. Yeah. And we are. So you have your packet. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for helping me, Linda. And all. Um, if I may also let you know, what's not pictured here that we are using is red cedar clapboard, which is original to the home. So the siding will be red cedar clapboard and painted to match. Hmm. Another thing to make a comment on, we have the wood doors are being made to match the aesthetics of the home and the homes in the neighborhood. The Copa Woodworking, from, they're out in California, and um, they're designing and making the doors. Do you want to start at the start of this presentation and actually go through page by page, maybe? Plan. Starting right here. So you're not doing a foundation, you're just supporting it on those like helical, small helical piles? Sir, techno metal post, yes. And it's all cedar clapboard and cedar, or what, what's the trim material? Is we are using red cedar for the trim too. Uh, for the trim, no, no. Unfortunately, I couldn't obtain cedar for that. Probably pine, painted to match um, the rest. Doug fir pine. I couldn't get a cedar trim. Well, you, you don't have to use cedar trim, but you have to tell us what you're going to use. It would be a dub for a pine. What what are the railings made out of? And again, I didn't work on this. Information. Oh, wait, maybe I do have it. There appears to be a wrought iron, but I need to get that confirmed. I apologize. I do not know that exact answer, but it appears so. I hate to be difficult, but 
for the sake of time, I will tell you, I think the design's really nice. I think it's going to look great on the house, but you have to have all the materials listed, which you seem to be missing some of them. So my suggestion would be just continue it, amend the packet to include all the materials, and we can vote on it next time. But I think, personally, I think that the aesthetics and what you're doing is great. Thank you. Uh, may I ask when next time is? To what, Linda, was it two Tuesdays? Um, it's in two Tuesdays. I want to say October 20th. Okay. Yeah, that would be right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so it looks like I'm missing handrails. Just run through the project, make a list, submit it with a list of all the materials and what they are, like trim, siding, railings, you know, shingles. Just make one big list, put it through, and that would be sufficient in my opinion. Yeah, and if you look on the back of the application, it has a list of the things that we generally require. So we just check that out too, or if you don't have it, you, you could get it from Linda. It's just that it has to be submitted in advance. So it's in the record at least 24 hours before the hearing. I submit this to Linda. Yeah. All right. Okay. Well, like I said, personally, I don't know, Don or Todd, if you guys feel the same way, but it looks better than what's there. So yeah, I don't have a problem with the application. I think the, the issue is just it since you're not totally familiar with with what these plans actually show or what the materials are, Inherited you, you, have to be, you, you, you have to be able to describe all of that to us. You know, and it has to have been evidenced in the um, exhibit materials. So I don't think you have an issue with this. I think um, Eric is right, but you're really going to have to come back in two weeks. Okay, well, thank you very much for your time. I'm sorry if I wasted any. Not a problem. Don't worry about it. Not a problem. I mean, this is this has never happened before. I'm just kidding. <laughs> happens all the time. Well, I mean, I'm looking at the back of your list. I have it all except the rails. That's that's the truth of the matter. I know the yeah. doors, I know what the doors are made out of. I know the siding. I know the trim. I I know the shingles. I know the lighting. I don't have the rails. I, I right. Well, well, but as I said, if you, unless your trim is states in the application or in the exhibits what it is made of i mean you have to tell us i just told you Doug fair no, it needs Doug? to be in writing and submitted ahead of time that that's yeah because the, the the public needs the ability to review it so the problem is, is if it's not if someone's not on the call they could say afterwards they didn't have ample opportunity or notice so it's not just a matter of you just telling us it has to be written up and submitted it into evidence with the commission before. Yes, I'm reading what you're throwing, what you're showing me here, and it says that we are closely matching the aesthetics of the home in the neighborhood, and Doug Fair Pine represents that. I no, I don't. No I, one's objecting to the materials. All I'm saying that you need to do is just make a list, submit it to Linda in writing. in writing so that it can be put on the website, the public can be notified, and then we can vote on it. I don't think anyone here, I know myself, is not objecting to any of the materials you're using. Okay, fair enough, guys, thank you. Um, do, so I do the same thing I did tonight in two weeks. Is it yes, right. yeah, you just should come back and just go through the entire presentation as though you've never been here. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to continue this. Um, I think we need to move to continue it. Unless you request that we continue it. Right, Linda? Then we don't have to vote on it? Um, I think you still vote on it. All right, so we're going to close. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to close the public hearings. Um, now I'm going to open deliberations. And if you guys want to make a motion on this. Uh, I'll, make a, I'll make a motion to continue it. I'll second it. All in favor, I'll take a roll call. Uh, Moriarty recused. Brady? Aye. Levinson? Aye. Goodman? Aye. Okay, the, the application's continued. Okay. All right. Thank you, Eric. Sarah, thank you. I'm on a bail.
Appreciate it. Right. See ya. Um, reopening the public hearings, I am going to call HDC 20-62 Gravel Street, Brian and June Carroll. No? All right. We'll circle back if Mr. Camo comes on. Uh, HDC 20-64, 23 and a half Pearl Street. Um, solar roof application? Yeah, Mr. we're here. All right. Um, please feel free to introduce yourself and begin your presentation. Yeah, hi. We're uh, Bill and Melissa Jankowski. Uh, we just uh, bought and moved into 23 and a half Pearl Street. Uh, one of the things that we did know uh, going into this was uh, it's in uh, need of a new roof. Um, and uh, we are, uh, it looks like the old presentation is still up there. That's not the application I submitted. Um, but uh, it needs a new roof. Um, we're out for a uh, quote for, yep, no, nope, that's not it. Uh, out for quote for uh, several, again, using just traditional asphalt shingles matching the, uh, uh, you know, ex exactly what the house was built with. Uh, but one of the options we did want to consider uh, was uh, Tesla solar shingles. Um, the house has uh, a lot of roof. It has a great southern exposure and uh, it would be good. Um, if you scroll down to the pictures of the house, um, the, uh, you know, the facade of the house is, uh, no, the pictures of our house. So um, oh. back up, you pass yep. the property cards, a good That's example. It. And then yep. I've submitted uh, some more so page three i think oh. is a property card um right so yes. from the from the street um there's not a whole lot of roof there i'm sorry to interrupt but pete these are the um he his came in after um i posted the agenda so they're the individual ones yeah the, the additional um photos I'm, I'm keeping you on your toes tonight, Pete. That's all. <laughs> that fish on your wall, Linda, isn't one of those where the fish head starts shaking and laughing at you or anything. Oh, it might. Yeah, like Billy Bass, except yeah. the pike. That one's a pike. Yeah, so, so that exhibit is just uh, screen captures from the uh, Tesla website. Um, there should be another one that has the, has the pictures from the roof before we get into what the, uh, you know, shape and texture of the, of the solar shingles themselves are. Um, this, this one will come back around to you. This was a project uh, that was done on uh, Hunting Ridge uh, in the uh, Chesboro Farm neighborhood um, with the Tesla solar shingles. Uh, as you can see, they look um, a whole lot like uh, traditional shingles uh, as opposed to uh, regular so solar panels. Um, but there should be uh, three pictures um, in another attachment that do show three views of uh, the front of our house. Uh, our house is seen from the street. Yep, this is it. So um, again, in here, uh, there's the uh, bay window. Um, we're gonna get that done with asphalt shingles. And then on to the right, there's a section of roof uh, over the porch uh, that likewise we're gonna get done with asphalt shingles. Um, and it's just the uh, top section of the roof uh, that we'd like to get done with the solar shingles. And I took, kind of quartering views or the next two pictures. So this is from, uh, this is looking uh, from, it's looking Southwest, right? So this is uh, just North of the house looking at it. Um, again, uh, not a great view because man, trees in this neighborhood are phenomenal. And then the uh, next picture um, is the uh, looking uh, Northwest at it. Uh, from just south of the house. Um, and so again, here in the winter, uh, you will be able to see a little bit of it, but, um, you know, going back to the pictures that we had, 
uh, from the installation that were done on Hunting Ridge. Um, there's not a uh, there's not really a whole lot of impact to uh, impact to the look and feel of the neighbor neighborhood. I don't know if you want to put up the Hunting Ridge pictures. That was a yeah yep. So again, um, you know this is this is just a traditional cape, right? And again, as you can see. Um, they look like shingles. Here, can you go back to the application? Bear with me, I got too many windows open now. <laughs> So on the roof right now, it's just traditional asphalt shingles. Yeah, and okay. again, it if Thank you. this gets denied, we're just replacing them with traditional asphalt shingles. Okay. Um, again, this is this is just one of the things while we were getting quotes, uh, we wanted to uh, go ahead and include this as one of the options. Um, I read through the historical commission guidelines. Again, if we you know if we do replace them just with the same asphalt shingles that are on there, um, you know I don't think I need a, a, I don't think we need a uh, appropriateness. Um, but uh, this, uh, again, I thought was an exciting application, right? It helps screen the house. Uh, the house has electric heat, um, which uh, again, you know, definitely helps push us closer to being carbon neutral. I know that's not something that you guys care about, uh, but um, it's something that is a little bit, uh, it's something that we're interested in. Um, and uh, again, it doesn't, uh, for, the, for the parts that are very visible from the street, um, we're gonna keep them as is. Well, the, the, the Historic District Commission has approved solar panels on uh, a fair number of roofs in the Historic District and the state in its policy proclamations encourages the use of uh, solar and other energy saving um, you know, devices or whatever, even in historic districts. So I think probably this is the first Tesla roof that we've seen, isn't it, Sarah? Yes. And and all I can say is certainly doesn't look any worse than solar panels. No, no. Probably not at looks all. a lot probably looks a lot better. So um, I think the it only, actually looks fine. I do too. The only question so as you heard in the previous application, we have to be specific with materials. So um I guess my, my question on the convention, but you're calling conventional shingles, you're correct in if you replace like for like, you do not need approval. So I just need your assurance that on that, on those two spaces that you're gonna use your asphalt shingles, that they're gonna be in the same color texture that are existing and then we don't need to worry about it. Okay. Yeah. In, well, uh, uh, is it is it an architectural shingle that's on, on right now, or is it a three tab shingle? And do you know what the I is? can probably go pull a couple out of my yard, um, <laughs> but I'm I'm not I'm not quite sure what the what the <laughs> difference is. We had uh, we have we have had a conventional roofer out, um, and uh, I believe he said they were architectural shingles. I, I guess my point is, if you're telling me you're going to replace it like for like, then it doesn't even need to be part of your application. Okay. Okay. If you replace it with something different than what's existing, then you need to come back and tell us what that is. But assuming that you're doing like for like, then we don't need to worry about it. Um, Got it. So then my next question is, this is our first time looking at Tesla shingles. So I can see them from the photos of what you've shown us, I guess I'm, I don't know what degree of specificity to ask you um, other than that it's Tesla signals. You know, when we're looking at conventional solar panels, 
Um, we asked them, are they putting up blue ones or black ones? Um, yeah. I don't know what what we're looking at here. Yeah, they so are, they yeah. just they just have the they just have the uh, one gray color, I believe. Oh. Um, I I guess the, the the main the main thing that I'm looking for assurances on is that I can proceed uh, into the design process with uh, Tesla because they've got a they've got a deal where uh, once um, it's like a 14 day window once they actually do uh, the detailed design uh, before they go into construction on it. Well, I think in light of what, you don't have any any actual photographs of any individual samples of what these shingles look like other than the photographs of the house where they've been installed previously, is that correct? That's correct. All right, so what I think, you, what I would recommend you do, and Sarah, you and Don can tell me if you disagree. I think you probably should come back and and have submitted some of their promotional brochures or whatever and or a photograph of what one of these shingles looks like up close so we can actually see what it looks like. So if you in one of the in one of the sets of pictures uh, that I did submit, um, there is, uh, I think it's one of the supplemental sets of pictures that I submitted. Um, it does go through and uh, shows like the, it shows the, uh, uh, yeah, so, so here it shows the, uh, if you go back up, it shows the, so that picture is showing the underlayment that they put in. Um, if, not sure which order these are in, uh, but one of them does have the spec of the shingle itself. Uh, go down the other way. That's the durability. They got a great video of them. Is, is that was was that the shingle right there? Uh, uh, that uh, yeah, uh, that was that was that was one of the shingles. You go back up here, right, right there. Is that is that your only choice? Like that's the shingle that's going to go on your house? Yeah, that's what they got. Okay, that works for me. Yeah. How about you okay. guys? Yeah, it works for me. So okay. just Don? keep scro keep scrolling down yeah. there, Peter. I just want to see what else he's got. That it? I think so. Peter, I yeah, one of the on in one of the presentations, there should be a slide of the shingle specs itself. Yeah, yeah, I, that's. Um, I think that's part of the. Um, not the individual ones, Pete. I think that's part of what was uploaded in the application, the agenda package. Right there. So the roof specs, is that it? Uh, this is, uh, that's the weatherization and the rest of it. There's, there. Okay. I think there's one, where it does show an individual uh, shingle and gives the dimensions for it. Okay, I, I don't recall that, but it could be there. That's all I have for the package. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I'm, I'm okay with what we have. What, yeah, I, mean, I, I am we, too. Yeah, all right. Um, does anyone have any additional questions for the applicant? No. No? All right. Um, thank you for your application. Would anyone in the audience like to speak for this application? Would anyone in the audience like to speak against this application? HDC 20-64 is closed. I'm going to jump back to HDC 20-62. On Gravel Street, as I see Mr. Camo has joined us. Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, um, the, the, the link had a little situation going on before. Um, all right, so this is uh, 21 Gravel Street, and uh, 
kind of self-explanatory, there is a screened in porch in the southeast corner of the structure. And um, it's part of a remodel of the interior actually that we're going to be doing, converting this space from just a screen porch to a dining room. Um, it gives great views to the river for the house. The screens do a great job, but you know, in, in New England, we, our, our screen porch time has been limited lately. Um, so the Carrolls would like to enclose this and make it a bigger part of their, of their interior living environment. So we're, um, the dilemma, however, is that the porch is built on um, sauna tubes and not exactly the best construction. Uh, I've inspected it. And so we, we want to remove the entire screen porch. Uh, it's been measured, it's been drawn, and we're going to replace it fully in kind um, from the ground up, but not on sauna tubes, on a foundation, two by six uh, insulated walls, and exterior pilasters and cornice treatments to match in exactly the dimension that you see there. So uh, the pilasters, there you go. The pilasters between the screens are, are 12 inches. Um, they have sort of a Doric coping at the top. We'll make all of this out of burral um, and or party material um, and uh, possibly even some Azex. The cornice as you see it will be replaced in kind in uh, dimensionally with a EPDM rubber membrane roof. Where the screens are now, dimensionally that simply gets replaced with um, French doors to match the front of the house, uh, which are shown in the elevations. And those will be uh, custom Anderson uh, A-series doors, uh, just like that. So we're matching the, um, the lock rail. There's a mid lock rail on those. But we're adding a vertical muntin, and um, and the reason is it's very common in these old, you know, shipwright houses that when they built a screen porch, they uh, or a sunroom, um, the the proportional fragmentation of the fenestration within those rooms was often broke down a little bit more. I did one right right around right around the corner um, for clients last year to two years ago now probably. Um, over on park. Uh, so, so rather than, than completely model the front of the house, we want to break the Munton pattern down just a little bit as shown. I've uh, included uh, the specification materials in the packet for, um, there we go, for the doors and the Muntins, the midline rail, and the materials that we'll use on the outside. So you know, basically you should drive by this in a year and not even know that this went on except for the fact that the screens were replaced with glass. Another part of the package is the Carols would like to replace um, the siding over time. Much of the siding has been replaced as a part of a previous edition before they purchased the house and it's um, hardy material. Um, and over time, they would like to replace uh, the, some of the clapboards that are they, they've seen their day um, uh, with burrow clapboards. Same color, same exposure. Thank you, Mark. Does anyone have any other questions for the applicant? Todd? No, it looks, looks fine to me. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. Would anyone in the audience like to speak for this application? Would anyone in the audience like to speak against this application? HDC 20-62 is closed. Uh, HDC 20-65, 54 West Main Street, BAB Realty, I'm sorry, BAB 26 Realty. I didn't see uh, Greg in our audience. Is he here? I think he was here. Was he? I didn't think I saw him. I, I, well, I saw yeah, his name. He his oh, name popped up, yeah. Oh, there he is. Greg? Let me text him. Oh, there he is. Well, there's his name. Greg, Greg can you hear us? He ate a... Greg. He ate a wrap. He ate a rat. He ate a rat. <laughs> <laughs> and he tore the bag. He uh, ate the rat. 
threw the bag out. He didn't eat the bag. Greg. Oh. That's me. Yep. Are you we're ready for you. Okay, I'm here. <clears throat> All right. Oh, is somebody sharing my screen? Are they screen? Uh, yes, Peter has your uh, thing up. You want to take over? Uh, I am no. Nope. I will just go through. There's just two small things on the uh, the plans we submitted. Us, uh, Greg Bettis with Bettis Engineering, representing uh, the owner of 54 West Main Street. We were here a couple weeks back, three weeks back, I guess, regarding <clears throat> the prop, the old Bank Bank of America building. Uh, so there's two things we did had to come back for. One was the accessible ramp. We had an aluminum ramp previously, uh, so now it's all wood. And then the rear access door was a steel door with no window, and we've switched it to a wood door with half a wind with a with glass, and which are detailed on the plan set that we revised and submitted. I believe they're on the uh, well. The door I think is there on that second sheet. Oh, yeah. yeah. So it's a wood door with. Windows above. Yeah. And then I think on the second sheet of the site plan is the, uh, <clears throat> well, it shows there in plan view, but we, and we called out a uh, wood ramp, uh, got rid of, the, rid of the aluminum. Yeah, definitely. So those two items are only visible from Bank Street, if you're kind of looking back towards the building as you go by, or if you take a quick glance between the Mystic Pizza parking lot and the Bank of America. Okay. I think that's all that was Don and Todd. That was all we needed was just to see the door. The, the door, and, and we had some and, questions about the aluminum ramp, yeah. Which is now thankfully wood. Yeah. Okay. Does anyone have any other questions for Greg? Nope. Todd? Nope, looks fine. Okay, thank you, Greg. Great, thank you. Would anyone in the audience like to speak for this application? Would anyone in the audience like to speak against this application? HDC 20-65 is closed. HDC 20-66, 28 Water Street, uh, Mr. Nelson, owner applicant. I think he's been patiently waiting. Pretty sure I saw him. Newt. There you are. Oh, there I am, yeah. <clears throat> All right, Mr. Nelson, you can introduce yourself and begin your presentation. Yeah, so <clears throat> my name is Robert Nelson, 28 Water Street, and our application is for a small addition off the back of the house. Uh, it's a nine by 22 addition. Um, it's a small house, we need a little more space. It's gonna be a reading room, uh, just a one story small addition. The siding will match the existing siding, which is clap, uh, cedar clapboard. Uh, there'll be three windows in the back of the house, so you won't even see that from the front at all. And they'll match the existing windows that are in the front of the house. There's a sliding door on the back of the house right now. We're going to reuse that. It's a sliding frame. We're going to reuse that in, in the side of that addition. Uh, what you're looking at right now will be facing this way. And um, it'll be an open, open the cathedral type ceiling inside. Exterior wise, uh, the only part you're going to see is what you're looking at right now as you're coming down Water Street and you look to your left, you're just going to see the end of the addition. The other side of the addition, 
you can barely see from the street. There's another house on the other side and it's pretty well blocked. So the only thing that's really visible is going to that one end of the, uh, uh, the addition. Um, right now there's in, in the back there where you're looking down at it right now, that view, um, you see it's nine by 22. Uh, we have a, a deck there right now. So we're gonna replace part of the deck with that addition. There'll still be a small deck. Um, uh, attached to that addition. <coughs> the back, the back, as you can see, is this ledge. So there's nothing, nothing behind there. It just goes straight up to the, uh, up to High Street, basically, in the back. Um, as I said, we'll, we'll match, the uh, shingles will match, the siding will match, the windows will match. Um, and that's pretty much all there is to it. There's just not that much there, so. Peter, can you scroll back up to um, how you were right there? Either one of those, those are, those are fine. Yeah. So it's right, I'm looking, I know you have your existing pergola and deck out back now. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So when I'm, isn't, is there, what's the roof? We're going to see the roof, right? Like, you'll you'll, it you'll like see flat. the there. Yeah, you'll see a, the piece of the roof on the, uh, you'll see the end of the roof, but it's only just, it's one level. Okay. You're not going to see that much of it. You're going to see just the very end that you're looking at from this view right now. But it's pitched, right? It's pitched, yes. It'll be pitched, yeah. Yeah. Well, there isn't, uh, there isn't that much to see for you, just from the street. You know, that shows you the footprint right there. And as you can see, as you were coming, if you're coming down Water Street, you'd have to look quickly to your left and you'll you'll see the end and then beyond that is just all rock anyhow on the back there so is there something that shows us the elevations of the addition uh no there isn't um it's going to be uh i think it's a nine foot uh i think it's nine feet high nine feet. Uh, Sarah, Sarah, if, if, if we can only see the south end of his addition, which I can attest is the fact because the house next door is very close, mm -hmm. do we even have jurisdiction over the rear of the addition or the north side? So I, I don't, we only have jurisdiction over what we can see and we can see this. I mean, I, I mean, I see this seven times a day, you know, so I I just want to make sure that we have in here what we're supposed to. And I, I mean, you're, I think we'll see be above the pergola a bit of the second story. And I kind of think we need the elevation for that. Yeah, there's not really a second story. Uh, just I'm sorry, the pitched roof. I shouldn't have said second story. Yeah, I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah, it will be above that pergola. The pergola, right. stays, pergola remains the way it is. Mm -hmm. The pitch of the roof will be just just above that pergola, correct. And is it just going to come out like this? Yep, that's it, like exactly. That? Yes, yep, you got it exactly, yep. Just like that, yep. So in your drawing, Bob, mm -hmm. your drawing doesn't really, I guess what Sarah's question is, it doesn't really show that pitch, does it? I mean, Peter, if you scroll back to the photograph or the drawing Peter, that Sarah wanted to look at. There's a sketch. I don't know if we, uh, you can see the... Yeah, that, well... well no, if you go... No, go go the other way again. More, keep going. I think. Well, there it is, right there. So you can you can just barely see the pitch yeah. right now. Yeah. And is this is the, you can't see what I'm pointing at? I'm sorry. <laughs> 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 um, is that a door that I'm looking at, like a? a yeah, French door, right there on the end. Yes. Okay. Yeah. That's a French which, which you said is an existing door in the house that you're moving around to the side. Is that correct? Yeah, it's in the back okay. of the house now. Uh, there's a there's a photo of it. I don't know if it's included in, in this, but that door will be just reused on the end of the house. Yeah. It's right there. There you go. There. Right. There. That's it. Okay. That's All it. Right. That, that helps. Door will become the, actually the side to the right. That'll be the, the door to the, uh, to the room. Yeah. And if you look on that, on that picture right there too, if you see the, the roof line on the left, part of that, yeah, they're right in there. That's going to be the, the height of the, uh, the new roof right there won't be any higher than that. Okay. Yep. Can you, you had the dimensions, right? The square footage in here somewhere? Uh, nine by 22. Yeah. And that, it was in here though. Was it the last 
photo. I just want to make sure it's in here. Uh, it's, it's in. It's in there. Yeah. It's, it's in, in his draw. It's in his drawing. In, in the drawing itself. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. Okay. That's yeah. what I was looking for. Yeah. A little, little crude, but <laughs> that's it. Yeah. So. And you can see to the left of the of the. Uh, that's where our existing gas tanks are, yep. and there, there's already a, a privacy fence in front of that that blocks all that from the street from the driveway on the other side. So, do, do we have information on the changes to the deck itself? Uh, no, there, no. There won't be any changes to the deck. We're actually building right over the deck using this, the existing footings. Okay. So can you, Peter, can you go back up to the application, please? And then she said, yeah, I wanted to see how you would do it, but then I have all this shit on her. And I said, oh, what, what happened? And then we said that. Nothing about me at all. Just fine, but you know, just stick with all. Okay, Judy, you know, I'm dying over here. <laughs> Sorry, it's pretty basic. <laughs> um, I'm on the cusp, like. You know, I, I'm reaching in that I know we've had this, this house come before us and I'm sure somewhere in our materials we have what your existing siding and windows are written down. Um, I'm just trying to connect all the materials. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure when, when John Arruda did the uh, rebuild right. of the house, uh, he had submitted everything to you. Yeah. No, I don't doubt it. It's yeah. just that we... Yeah. We like to have it with each yeah. application. So your siding would be match existing siding, which is X. It's just yeah. it's, it's, it's cedar, cedar clapboards. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, and then not having the height of the roof. Um, it should be in here. So when are you looking to start construction? Uh, <laughs> as soon as possible. <laughs> like, like it's already dug. <laughs> uh, no, 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 at all. <laughs> well, that wouldn't be the first time. Um, Peter, can you slowly go through the application? Well, just you can just keep scrolling and let me look at everything. Yeah, I'm kind of with you, sir. I mean, it doesn't, doesn't seem like it's all there, you know. But or the, what was it, 14 feet to the, yeah, no, yeah. Not, not even. yeah. Can you go back up here? Right there. Yeah, that, that little oh, yeah. there, that, that's, that's going to be the height of the uh, roof right there. So it's going to run along where your um, roof ends now, or you're going to line it up. Yeah. That that's gonna it's gonna end there. That's gonna be the same elevation. Correct. Right. It'll match that. Yes. Okay. Then it'll be sloping down. Bye bye. Back. Thoughts, Todd. Well, I mean, I don't disagree that we don't have the actual dimensional height of the roof, but I think that given the constraints um, that he, his, 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 when he says that it's not going to be any higher than that line that he's showing there, which matches the, um, the existing uh, roof on the left there, um, and given that we know he's not going to build a house with, a, well, a four-foot outside wall, but it's going to probably be like nine feet, um, I think that probably his sketch uh, – 
reasonably accurately reflects what the pitch of the roof will be. And so I don't disagree with you, but I'm not sure that I feel it's necessary to come More back to give back. us that height. Yeah. All right. Like I said, I was, I'm kind of on the, on the cusp. I, I can live with it. I would like more material um, in the future. If you could come back with more material. Sure, um, sure. Yeah. But I think that if we tried to, we could tie all of the components together. Mm -hmm. Don. Okay. Yeah. Uh... I guess it's sorry. I, I don't know why people can't just read the instructions and come in with what they're supposed to come in with. But I suppose it's a it's a question mark when someone says they are going to match the existing exterior clabbered and trim. Right. Right. I'm I'm not sure that isn't somewhat dispositive of what he's going to use, regardless whether we know what it is. I mean, I'm I'm, I'm maybe reaching on that, but. Uh, I'm not sure it's a true, I'm not sure it, it makes a whole lot of difference um, if he's going to match it. Yep. It's almost in the opposite of if they're not matching it is when they should disclose it. Right, exactly. So, I mean, I don't think, I think that I agree with Don. I think that, you know, Bob, you should have just specified what it was. But again, yeah. I, I, I just, I just don't yeah. think it's worth continuing this hearing for mm -hmm. that reason. I think. Right. You know, we got to process these things. Yep, I'm all right with it. Okay. All right. Um, all right. Uh, cool. Any more from the applicant? Uh, no, thank you. Okay. All right. Uh, no. Would anyone in the audience like to speak for this application? Would anyone in the audience like to speak against this application? HDC 20-68 is closed. So we will now close public hearings and open deliberations. So thank you. I, I will first call HDC 20-6221 Gravel Street, Brian and June Carroll, Mark Camo applicant. This was the application for the conversion from the um, screened in porch to um, a three to four season room with French doors. Any comments or motions on this application? I think, I think that, um, you know, what he's proposing here, you know, is, highly appropriate with regard to what was there. He's copying all the base details and really all he's doing, as he said, is he's converting the screen doors to, um, to wood doors. And, um, and as a result, I think it's, uh, it's fully acceptable. And I move that we grant a certificate of appropriateness. I agree with your comments and I will second. Uh, all in favor, Moriarty, aye. Brady? Aye. Levinson? Aye. The application is approved. Uh, HDC 20-64, 23 and a half Pearl Street, Mr. and Mrs. Jankowski. This was for the Tesla solar roofs. Any comments or motions? My um, only comment. Yeah, oh, go, ahead. Okay. go ahead. Go ahead. Go <laughs> ahead. If it works and if it looks like the photos that he's shown, I think it's a, a much preferred aesthetic solution to the solar panels that we see. I, I, I agree. And, and, um, and I'm looking forward to seeing what it looks like. But I also think that by doing, by matching the existing shingles on the more exposed portions of, of the roof, he won't be altering that. Um, and uh, I think this is um, is a good solution. And as you say, I don't know what the cost differential is between a regular solar roof and a Tesla roof, uh, but I believe it said it is a 25 year warranty on it. Um, yeah. So I move that we grant a certificate of appropriateness for this application too. I second it. All right, I'll do a roll call. Moriarty, aye. Brady? Aye. Levinson? Aye. The application is approved. Uh, HDC 20-65, 54 West Main Street, BAB 26 Realty. This was- hey, Hold on for Sarah, Sarah oh, just sure. Linda, do you think we have to add something about uh, just in the approval that consistent with the requirements of state uh, law that we look favorably on energy efficient uh, proposals. I or would defer to Pete on that question. I wouldn't think it's necessary for historic district. We're not an energy, energy conservation group. No, but there's a state statute that says we have to give preference to solar energy absent you know, a more specific finding. 
Oh, oh. Because I think it's a bird. <laughs> no, we haven't done that before. Yeah. And you know what, Don? Also, I think that was part of your discussion as part of the application. All right. Yeah, I just we, we, notes to that effect. Yeah, because we've had discussions before that we're not giving like enough information in the approvals. That's true. Well, that's more denial. All right, all right. I think with the denial, you need to be a lot more specific. All right, all right. Yeah. Anyway, all right, uh, HCC 20 65 54 West Main Street. This was Greg Fettis's application, and this was when he came back to us for um, that door and wood ramp. Any comments or motions? I move to approve. Um, my, I second. Oh, go I ahead, just, Sarah. I, I very much prefer the wood. I did not, that yeah. one I didn't think was at all fitting, so I appreciate that they made that change. Um, so Todd seconded it, so I'll do a roll call. Moriarty, aye. Brady? Aye. Levinson? Aye. The application is approved. Uh, HDC 20-66, 28 Water Street. This was Mr. Nelson's addition to the back. Um, any comments or motions? I, I, I just will say again what I said in, in the discussion. And I think that although there are a few things that could have been more specifically delineated, um, I believe that the sketches that have been supplied and uh, and the fact that he says he will match the existing cedar siding and the, and the trim uh, gives us enough detail um, on this, especially given the fact that you can only see the south side of the, uh, of the addition, and that's the only thing we have jurisdiction over. So I think it is sufficient, and I move that we grant a certificate of appropriateness. As I said in the public hearing, I think that there's enough information there. I just, I would like to be consistent in the requirements that we set for people. Um, and I just wanna make sure that we are. Um, but with that said, I will second the motion and I'll do a roll call. Uh, Moriarty, aye. Brady? Aye. Levinson? Aye. The application is approved. Yeah, and, and Linda, just as an editorial comment, I mean, I know you talk to most of these people and I'm sure that you probably tell them to read our information sheet. Is that correct? So yes, that is correct. And um, in the case of Mr. Nelson, I did work with him. And um, I did suggest a couple of things. And he did come back to us with a little bit more based on what we talked about. So, um, so, you know, we're working on refining at the front counter, what it is I'm anticipating you might want. And then what it is that the the customer or homeowner can supply to us. So we okay. we are working on that. Okay, because the only thing I th I'm sorry. No, I'm just saying because um, of the fact that we we moved to um, a virtual and we want to make everything clear to folks who have an interest and aren't able to really come into a meeting to take a look at things. You know, we're really trying to be a lot more specific about. Uh, the exhibits that are um, submitted. Right, so the only thing I was thinking about when I was sitting here was with mm -hmm. that sheet that has all these requirements for an application, maybe yeah. we should make it a requirement when you submit your application that you submit that sheet and that we change the sheet to have a series of little check boxes, mm -hmm. yes or no. And that we make everyone, I don't know what they require for us to do this, make everyone check off all the boxes saying that in fact they have supplied everything that they're supposed to supply and then make that part of their application. So it's kind of like a report card. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I and if you, don't, if you don't check the box, then we can yell at them when they come to the meeting and tell them, <laughs> ask, ask them if they have trouble you reading. Never yell at folks. But that, that is a it good could, point. That's a good you know, point. I know sometimes I will, um, I'll create a plot plan for them when I think that maybe they haven't given you, you know, sort of the logistics of where it's located, you know, so we do try to refine it. That's not a bad idea to make that a part of it. Make it so, part of the application. Yeah. So, you yeah. know, you're sort of on the record. Right. Well, are you going to have a signature bar and a date on it too? Uh, maybe. No. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> That's a good point. What, I mean, like a set of fingerprints or something? <laughs> No, 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 just that they, you know, it could have been the dog stepped on it, you know, you just uh, have a signature yeah. line and a date. Yeah, that's true. 
Well, I, I just think it's something to think about anyway. Okay. All right. and, and the thing is, Linda, you know, in the past when we were in person, we let people amend things on the yeah. spot, initial right. things, and, yeah. you know, just can't do it now. Exactly. Yep. Understood. Okay. All right. Um, Pre-application hearings. Do we have anyone here for something new? I think. Yes. I see some people. All right, we'll just go down the line here. Um, and Kirsten, you are our first. Uh, good evening, my name is Kirsten Sutt. I am here to discuss the purpose. Um, the purpose for my conversation tonight with you is to discuss the feasibility of a second floor garage apartment at my home at 50 West Mystic Avenue. So, um, I have some pictures for, for you, but before I get to those, I just want to explain the current reality is that there is attached garage, a detached garage um, that's about 21 by 20 feet with a bump out storage section. Some support structures are rotting as well as one wall in the back. There's no apparent solid foundation. Um, the inside of the garage is pebbled stone. Um, the current structure is becoming an eyesore. I'm unsure of the age of the garage. Um, and my mom is currently um, in the home, but the plan is for my husband and I to move to Connecticut um, in about a year. So that apartment will be for her to live. So I'm going to share my screen quickly. Here you are. That's uh, true. Your face isn't in there. Okay. You see, it says Bob Ford. Oh, it's not allowing me to share my screen. I think Peter just has to oh, promote you up. Promote you. Supposedly, we're not supposed to have to do that. But oh. Try that. Okay. Yes. Okay. Where do we? That one. Our game. Go right to the top. Share. Okay. Go All right. The there. Can everybody see my screen? Yes. yes. So this is the current. Okay. So the detached garage is on the left. <laughs> Um, there are, I took various pictures from walking around the garage. You can see the rotting front post. You can see um, from the garage to the street where the garage is situated at the, on the driveway. Um, this is looking north at the side of the garage, so towards the house. And this is the rotting back wall which faces a neighbor, and then the storage section is rotting out. Um, and this is facing with the house behind me, facing the garage. So um, I had some quick drawings drawn up to give a proposal for the idea of the garage apartment. So we are, we would have to demolish the apart, the garage and rebuild in order to support the structure. And then to the right is somewhat of the layout of the garage, of the apartment on top. So I didn't know if anybody have any questions so far I can keep going. <laughs> I, I mean, my only initial comments as far as I have no objection to okay putting a second story on the garage nor to um, raising the existing structure and building a new structure. The only comment I have with regard to aesthetics is I think, and it's tough to say because I can't see the two structures side by side, but you would want the new structure to look like it's a accessory structure to your existing house, not like a whole separate, you know, almost as if the properties aren't even connected. So you yeah. just want it to model this, the characteristics of your existing house. Yes, the plan would it, that it would have <coughs> goals like it had to match the house now. 
Yeah, it's just hard to see. Yeah. So. But, Okay. And would the would the new structure be attached to the house or separate? no? It would still be detached. I have a question for Peter. Do they need a demolition permit to take the garage down? Huh? You know, Peter. I was on mute. Yes, yes, they will. And that means they'd have to go for a demo permit and have to be the delayed time frame according to the HTC. Say that last part again. There's the delay in the time, the 90, 90 day delay for HDC for a demolition permit. Okay. Okay. Um, would we, is height consideration at all? Do we need to worry about the height from, because this will be a new structure? Um, there are, I don't, I think I think there are height limitations, but I don't think that to that. But I, this structure doesn't look like it would exceed them. Okay. And I think that th that that question is sort of in keeping with Sarah's original comment that whatever you you want to build here should be in some respects compatible or sympathetic with the the house um, from an architectural standpoint. All right. Um, which is, I think, in some respects, this will look better with the house than your existing garage. Huh. Yes, <laughs> I do agree that with that. Yeah. Okay. All right. Do you have any questions? Anything a question? more? Is you got another? What you have a picture of the of some sliders down there, or some French doors, yeah. or? So that those are the proposed sliding doors that will go out to a deck, um, okay. a small deck, maybe four feet. Right here in the front. In yeah. The, of the apartment. And the great next doors. attachment. I'm sorry. I really like those doors. Yeah, aren't they cool? <laughs> um, and then I just attached a plot plan just in case that was needed for this conversation. But it doesn't sound like that's really needed at this time. No. Well, no, but you'll need it for the application. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Yes. I just wanted to have an understanding that this structure, that there wouldn't be an issue with going for more detailed plans for this structure. No. Okay. So well, you mean there wouldn't be an issue? Well, when you come in with for the public hearing, you will need more detailed plans. Yes, of course. Materials for the outside, dimensions up on up the the height, right? What yeah. else? Yes, it, everything that's in our sheet. Right. Yep. The checklist. Sure, the check, I got it. Yeah, the soon to be possible checklist. Yep. Got it. Uh, Chairman, we yep. have somebody with their hand raised in the. Uh, all right. Oh. I don't see them, but go ahead. Is it someone who wants to speak on this particular application? Uh, the, the hand went up. That's why I'm asking. Yeah, no, that, I, that was, uh, I put it up there a couple of minutes ago, not, okay. not particular to this. Okay. Not specifically for this one? Okay. Yeah, thanks. All yeah. right. My husband just has one we, more question. One last question here. So we sure. were instructed to come see you guys first. Yeah. Which we are. And now I'm hearing of a demo permit. So what's the order of the boards, if you will, or commissions that we have to go speak to next. So, and then I, I'm not sure I understand the delay of the HDC application. Can you, can somebody understand, explain that to us? You, you, you can come back in two weeks if you can prepare a full set of drawings and give and provide all the detail that you have to. The demolition permit is something that's, a, is a state uh, rule when you're going to demolish something in a historic district. So you could go for a demolition permit tomorrow, even Got before it. you had your approval but you will have a 90 day waiting period from the time that the demolition permit is issued. Correct, Peter? Correct. And we would have to, we would have to approve as the HDC, the demolition of the garage in conjunction with approval of the structure. So maybe in fact, I don't know if they can apply for the demo permit before they get HDC approval or not. Maybe they I didn't can't. I think they could, but I Yeah, maybe not. Okay. It's so, an unfortunate sort of 90 day period that you just have to live with, you know? So yeah. I'm sorry, let me just try to paraphrase that. So as you said, we can come back in two weeks with all the list of materials for the outside and what have you, similar to what we had, the picture of the door. But in addition, we got to, we have to go to the state. No, no, you just, no, you just have a 90 day waiting period. That's a state law that says that. You go to the building department to pull a demolition right. permit. You, you go to the demo, you pull it from the building department, the demolition permit. I'm not following. So, so think of your 
HTC application is two different things. You have yes. one application to demolish the garage. Then you have uh -huh. another application to rebuild the garage. You do not need to provide us your rebuilding plans to get the demolition approved. So if you wanted to come before us in two weeks and say, hey, I want to tear my garage down, we can say that looks like a great idea. It's going to fall down if you don't. Then you can go to the building department and get your demolition permit. And then there's a 90 day waiting period before that's approved. Thank you, Sarah. That Thank is exactly you. what I was looking for. Thank okay. you. And then one last question. When, I'm assuming we're going to have to, but when does the zoning board get involved here? Because I'm sure that's going to be a party as well. So depending on what you're building, you may or may not need to go to zoning. I can't speak to that, but normally people who come before the HDC go to us first. Yep, which is what we're doing. And then what's approved by us, then they move on to zoning. So, okay, so then let's repeat this one more time. We come to you guys for our demo permit or demo approval. approval. We go to the state or whoever to get the demo you, you permit. Just don't, no, you don't go anywhere. The building department. They take okay. care of that. The building right. department in Ekron. Then, 90 days later, we come back to you guys for the approval. No. Uh, this is where I'm screwed up with the 90 okay. days. Okay, so, so you come to us to see if you can tear your garage down. Assuming yep. we say yes. Yep. Then you go to the building department and pull your permits. And there's a 90 day waiting period for that. While you're waiting for that 90 day period to go by, you can still move through the municipality and come back to us with your garage plans. And then after we give you approval, pr presumably go to zoning if necessary. That perfect. Okay. That is, but I, thank you. But for I, that. I also think Sarah, they can come in with one application to demolish the garage and put up the They absolutely garage. can. I just didn't know if they would be ready for that. Yeah, years. you can do it all at the same time if you want to. I get it. Okay. Thank you. That, that really helped. I really appreciate yeah, that. You don't have to wait the 90 days to come to us with the new plans for the yes, new building. Yes, okay. that's what I didn't just understand. That, thank you. Yeah. I, I got it now. We're and, good. And, what, and the reason for that is, is that's giving basically the general public and whatever 90 days in which to complain or or try to stop you from demolishing that beautiful garage. I'm sure we'll have lots of people lined up for that. Thank you. I think, I think so. I'll be out recruiting people starting yeah, tomorrow. I figured. Okay. <laughs> okay. This okay. helps a lot. Thank you very much. Thank You're you. You're welcome. Appreciate All right. your time. Um, I believe Mr. Hurd is next. Great. Uh, good evening, everyone. My name is Peter Hurd. Um, live in Manchester, Connecticut, lifelong uh, Connecticut resident, and this is where Beth and I make our home. Uh, but two weeks ago tomorrow, we bought uh, 15 Library Street. And uh, what I'm coming to you tonight is to really have a, a conversation, seek your guidance around some landscaping, uh, which I don't think uh, is an issue, but uh, also some fencing work. Um, and if I may share my screen, I can show you a few pictures. Is that okay? Yeah. Now, I was told you didn't, you as an attendee, you could do it as a panelist. There we go. He's able to share. How's I don't know why some people have a hard time with that. <laughs> <laughs> so so the, the scope of this conversation of work really is only removal uh, at this point. There are many overgrown trees tired shrubs, plantings, et cetera, but there's also some fencing that is rotting and falling down. And I'll show you those pictures in, in a second, but that's the side of the house. You're probably all familiar with it. And this is the plot plan. There is a fence along the driveway that goes from Library Street to uh, West Main. And then another fence that I, I think the previous owner may have had a dog or something and it's where you know, they, they put the dog out. Also along here is a probably about a six foot high concrete wall that separates the property. So this fence hides that wall a little bit. And this is the, you know, the aerial satellite of that. Okay. This is the view of the driveway from Library Street looking over to West Main. And you know, the fence is just you know, rotted and falling down. 
and what we're what we would like to do, and this is this is the same the view from the other side. What we would like to do is to remove this fence here to get to this vegetation. It's a little bit catch twenty two. I can't get to the vegetation or remove it unless I remove the fence. And uh, you know we we'd like to move ahead with that as soon as we possibly can. The other fence. This is the view from Main Street. Uh, and the driveway is over here, kind of next to this walk sign. This fence is about six feet high. And this is the corner of that fence that goes back to the house. And then inside, there is, you know, a small section that goes back into the house. So I, I guess what I'm seeking your guidance is, you know, I, I need to take down these trees and shrubs and we're not quite sure what we're going to do to replace uh, at this point. What I'm somewhat considering is taking this fence, which is actually in pretty good shape, uh, and it's six feet high, and maybe putting it, you know, along here because it would hide that concrete wall that we're exposing. So, you know, that's that's kind of what we're looking to do and seeking your guidance on that. So. Okay. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, else go ahead. Go and, ahead. And I'm sorry. The other thing, the fence is probably, my guess is probably 20, 25 years old, somewhere on there. I don't believe it's a historic fence. So we don't care what you remove for vegetation. That's yep. not in our jurisdiction. So you can do whatever you want there. However, I understand that you can't remove the vegetation until you remove the fence. Um, that photo right there that Peter or you have up is a great photo of showing us that the fence really needs to be re repaired, replaced, removed, one of the above. I looked at the guidelines recently and we do have jurisdiction over the removal of fences. So this is something that you would have to come before us on. Um, that being said, I can only give you my own personal opinion. It's not, it's not a very special fence. It's not uh, wrought iron fence. It's not anything exceedingly unique. So I wouldn't necessarily have an issue um, with you removing the fencing. I don't know what my other commission members have. We've really had more of an issue with what, if you're going to put another fence up, what you're going to make the other fence out of than taking yeah. this one. Me too. I mean, when, when we remove that, here's, we're going to be staring at a six feet concrete wall. Right. And, you know, we definitely want to figure out a way to hide that. Okay, so, so you should just be forewarned that there have been a couple of somewhat tempestuous hearings uh, regarding fences in large measure having to do with materials. And so they have to do with vinyl fences versus wood fences. Yeah. And there are differences of opinion on the commission about that issue. Yeah. In which I, there, I, you know, just so you know, so... Yeah, I'm 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 good with what you guys decide there. I'm I'm not looking to do anything out of the norm there. At this point, what I'm really trying to do is to get that vegetation down ASAP because what we want to do, you know, there's a lot of other shrubs and things uh, that we're taking down, and we're actually going to start grading tomorrow. So we've taken down, you know, several of these shrubs already, and and you know what I'd like to do is actually while the guy's there you know, get this down as well. But, you know, if I have to wait, I have to wait. I, I think you'd, you'd have to come back with, and you'd have to submit your paperwork, what, by Wednesday of this, or Thursday, Linda? Or we yes. have, yep. you'd, have to, you'd have to submit well, your- the application. Yeah. 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 And the, the back, the back, you know, the information or the backup, you have a little bit more time on to submit. Mm -hmm. um, and I guess that might include some more more dramatic pictures of the fence, if it in fact you want to take it down, in terms of its its state. Um, and then you can just ask for permission to take it down. Okay. Right. And and I think probably I mean I know what concrete wall you're referring to, and I would certainly do something to try to screen it after I took the fence down. That's for yeah. sure. Yeah. Okay. So. So don't touch it tomorrow. <laughs> Probably not a good idea. Okay. And, and apply by this Thursday to have for the next meeting to be able to touch this. At, at least right. fill out your application. 
Okay. Yep. But I can I can do that. Noon it's, time on Thursday is yep. the cutoff. Okay, we can do that. Great. And your uh, application then, should just consist of fence mm -hmm. removal. You don't need to mention vegetation. You don't need to mention what you're replacing it with. Okay. One one further question I make this this right here, the guys is a is a not viewable from the street and their equipment can't get in here to remove these trees and grade. Can I take down, you know, two or three sections of this to be able to access and grade there before I come to you, you know, and are, are, are you going to, you intend to put that, is that the same fence? That's a different fence, right? That that's, um, that's this fence. Right. right. That's, that's all right. So, that's not the fence along the concrete wall. I, so I guess I, I may be speaking out of turn, but if, if your intention is to take down a few sections, but then put them back up, yeah. then I don't think there's an issue, is there? No, I also don't think that there's necessarily an issue if he takes the fence down, removes the vegetation, you know, saves the fence to put it back up. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I mean, if he's, there's nothing, we can't tell him he can't take his fence down to remove vegetation and then put his fence back up. We can't tell him that? No, I mean, he can, anyone can take their fence down, remove vegetation and put their fence back up. Right, right. Right? Oh, I think, he can yeah, do that I for you, his whole property. Correct. Right. Oh, I thought you said we couldn't make him put it back up. No, no. He can take his fence down, remove his vegetation with the intent of putting his fence back up. Yeah. Right. And you don't need to come to us for that. Okay. Yeah. What, what we're planning on doing is planting about 35 uh, uh, emerald green arborvitae along here instead of having this fence. That's, that's kind yeah. of the general idea. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. So I'll, I'll tell the guys that we can take this down at least just to get in here to grade and all that, we will uh, put it back up if you'd like us to put it back up. And but I'll be at you, you know, in a couple of weeks at the next meeting with the formal application. If that well, sense. or or if you know, if you want to take that other fence down and leave it down, then make that part of the same application. I will. Yes. And and it, and and we can decide to let you take one of them down and not the other. So just make them two divisible paragraphs or whatever. Understood. Okay. <clears throat> Okay. All right. Well, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. All right. Mr. Fru. Yes. How are you tonight? I'm fine. Thank you. All right. Um, <clears throat> I don't have a presentation like the last person, unfortunately, but this is 11 Gravel Street. Mm -hmm. And we've, uh, we've owned this uh, house for 26 years and we've gradually uh, got it back in shape. Um, now we want to, um, I, I hope you can see this. But we, yeah, we can see it. This is the back elevation. And we need uh, three permissions from you. One is to move uh, this window over by about a foot. And the second is to uh, change this window to a door, the same door as this is. And the third is to remove this unused chimney. So that, and I can show you some plans. This is the plan as existing. It has a, um, uh, it's a summer kitchen with the kitchen to the left and the bathroom to the right. And what we want to do is to um, make this the master bedroom at the back with the door that I have uh, mentioned. And also, to, we need to move this window because we can't get any closets on this wall and move the bathroom to this, this location. Okay, can, can, how much, can we see the back of that house <laughs> from the street? Not from Gravel Street. Not from gravel, from any other from street? Any street? Well, I think if you had to look carefully from Pearl Street, you could uh, see the back. 
Okay. I mean, if we can't see it from any public way, we have no jurisdiction. That's why I asked the question. Oh. Oh, thank you, Peter. Thank you. I didn't know how to do that. I'm sorry. That's okay. I don't either. <laughs> um, so the picture that we're looking at now is the house that you were referencing. You yeah. want to get rid of the chimney, move the window over a foot, and what about the door? Uh, yeah, that's the... Uh, uh, let me go. He wants to take a window and make it into a door. That's Which right. One? And it, it'll be the same... The same, same as uh, this door here, which we did some years ago. I think about 20 years ago we did this. I'm confused which window is becoming a door. You can't see it. I think it's to the part on the left. It's not. Uh, it's around, it's uh, around the back. It's, it's around, around the, the corner. Back. Yeah. Gotcha. I, I personally, as so long as you're, I mean, you're using a door that you already have, I, I don't have any concerns. Does any of my commission members have any suggestion, direction, or advice? No, other than you've just you have to you'd have to come back to us. I mean, I don't see any big issues here. You just have to come back with us with with a more detailed drawing and elevation showing the existing condition and what you intend to change it to and what it is going to look like then and the kind of window and the kind of door and what it's made of and its size and that kind of thing. Yeah, we're not, uh, there won't be any new windows. We're simply moving one window. Right. And taking the other one out. I don't know what we'll do with it, but uh, we'll put it in the basement. Right, and then and then you said you want to take the, ch the chimney off that back addition. You want to take it down because you're not use not going to use it anymore. Right. Well, I guess you, want, you, you want to get rid of the chimney, right? Yeah, it hasn't been used all the, uh, time that we've lived there so we well, just gotta gonna tell us you're gonna put the same kind of roof shingles that are on the rest of the roof to cover the hole oh yeah we've yeah. got leftover we've got leftover shingles okay so I think if you just come back to us with some some more details <laughs> more detailed plans and a list of materials and such you'll be in good shape good so, all right I have to do that by Thursday? Thursday. Yeah. Okay. Well, you don't need Thursday. to list the material. You just have to do the application by Thursday, but you can get the list of materials, right, Linda, up to 24 hours before the next hearing? Or Well, give her a little, give her a little time, right? Yeah, we prefer it a little sooner than that. So, it, so we'd like the application by Thursday noontime. Okay. And if you can get the supporting materials, by a week after that, approximately the following Thursday by noontime, that, that's a good time frame for okay. us. Okay, that's great. All right. And, and just make sure you get the sheet. Right. The sheet that tells you what you have to give us. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. I, well, that's I, all right. I, you don't the, need only thing I got, the only thing I got was the, the uh, email from uh, the lady at... Uh, the annex to um, uh, and how to get onto this, and it took me forever to figure it out. I'm, oh dear! I'm only uh, eighty years old now, and I'm not. That's it. I used to teach computing, but I I'm useless at uh, Zoom. Sorry. Well, it changes <laughs> the speed of light for sure. So uh -huh. if you if you wouldn't mind, give you can give me a phone call in the office tomorrow. Uh -huh. And I'll send you the application and the guidelines that they're speaking about. Okay. Okay. Good. I will do. Thank, Thank you, you Mr. very Mr. much. Thank Have you. Good evening. So I see a Mary in the audience. Are you here for a pre-app? Are you muted? I'm. Are you, you're not talking to me, right? No, I was talking to oh. Mary. Okay. Gotcha. There she is. No, I'm. I'm not here. Okay. I'm just. Just uh, concerned about one of the applicants, but um, just listening. Okay. All right. Well, I, you know what? I just um, minimized the agenda. Let me pull that back up. I think we're on to. I don't know where we are. Minutes of last meeting, maybe? Is that what it is, or is it? 
It's, I think it's public communications. Public communications. Do we have any public communications? Uh, the only thing we've gotten is the, I'm not sure if it's considered public, but it's the follow-up to um, the fact that Heather had resigned. So we, we got that um, from the town clerk's office. Okay, yeah. thank you. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I'm sorry, I, I can't find the agenda. I must have closed it by accident. Um, so after that, we have uh, new business. Minutes. Minutes, all right. Um, the minutes are from September 15th, is that correct? Yes. Yeah, that's it. All right, so I move to approve the minutes from September 15th. Second, Todd. I'll do a roll call, Moriarty, aye. Brady? Aye. Levinson? Aye. The minutes are approved. All right, so new business? No, old business. Old business, you have the agenda. <laughs> Yeah, I have it up. I should just let you run the meeting the rest of the way. Uh, is there any old business? Wasn't there something we were supposed to say about one of the previous? So actually, years? you're right. Thank you. Um, Linda, did you get a note from, ah, oh, thank you, Peter. Did you get a note from um, Bob Mercer? I did not. Okay, so then there's nothing for old business. If he submits a letter, to change those materials, we need to enter, we need to discuss those with old business and just kind of connect the application to the old business. And, and this is for which one is that? This was um, for Sully Ahmed's okay. um, project where it, you can't see the garage doors from a public way and they were switching out materials, but it was part right. of their application. Okay. Um, but if he hasn't submitted, and he knows he's supposed to, so if he hasn't, then there's nothing for us to do. Okay. Um, new business, HDC 2021 commission meeting schedule. Uh, are we supposed to approve that? Yes. Okay. Um, I didn't look at it, but I'm certain I have no objection to it because it doesn't contain surprises. Um, does anyone have any comments or objections to it? No. All I right. move. Go ahead, Don. Do we have to vote on it, Linda? Yes. Yes. Yeah, okay. I move to approve it then. Okay. I Bye. second. Todd seconds. Uh, roll call. Moriarty, aye. Brady? Aye. Levinson? Aye. All right. Any other new business? No. Uh, just okay. uh, we, we know anything about our new applicant to be, join us and this Marie Band here? I believe she had a concern over an application and was just um, part, you know, reviewing the, the application, the meeting. I apologize. Say that again? I think she had a concern over an application and was listening in on the meeting to see what was going on. She was just a pub public person. Oh. Uh, no, no, I was talking about the, the uh, person that applied to be on the commission. Oh, I didn't know anyone, uh, someone named yeah. Mary applied to be on the commission? No, no, no. Mary, Mary was listening in to the presentations because she has a concern about an application. Right. We, but, um, um, Bill Ferguson applied to go on the commission and he did get approved by the one of the council committees and my understanding is it has to go to the full council for them to vote on it at which point he would then be appointed to the HDC. Yep. So we would have another member. That's that's what he was asking about. Gotcha. I misunderstood. I thought he said. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Um so I guess I move to adjourn. Sounds good. <laughs> All right. Thanks, everybody. Thank right. you. Have a good night. Good night. Good night, everyone. Good night.